Hi, I'm John again, and I thought I would talk a little bit about the difference, co the different coverages on your insurance policy. Please note that I'm not an insurance consultant, I'm not an attorney, I'm just a general contractor that has specialized in doing fire and water damage for the last 30 years, and I used to be a large loss adjuster for one of the largest insurance companies in the, in the world, uh, specializing in fire and those kind of damages. So the first one I wanted to talk about in your policy, it's called a declaration page. And this declaration page, it's, it's, it's the front of your policy and it has all the limits on it. So for instance, it'll say building and it'll have house or business and it'll have a dollar amount and it'll have all these dollar amounts listed on it. Those are what are called coverages. So, and usually not every insurance policy is the same, but most of them are very similar, at least in the residential policies, even in the commercial policies. But in the residential policies, which I'm focused on this particular report, in this particular video is, uh, we're gonna call it coverage A. Coverage A is the building itself. So whatever your building has for coverages, it'll have a dollar amount in this declaration page. And the declaration, we're just gonna make some assumptions that let's say that the declaration page says $200,000. Well, inside of your insurance policy, there's additional coverages that are available. For instance, there's an additional 5% for debris removal. So that if that line item says, and you have to look inside every policy is different, but usually it's that much. So if you have $100,000 worth of coverage or 200,000, it would be a 5% or you have $5,000 or a $10,000 additional coverages available for debris removal. There's also one for landscaping. There's another, it's usually a percentage of your coverage A limit. Then also in that same coverage A, sometimes they call it a little different, it's for an outbuilding, it has another limit on it. So what's important is, is that you know how much your coverages are and inside of that policy, there's endorsements. For instance, there's an endorsement most of the time for building codes. So for instance, if your house didn't have a foundation underneath it, the building department won't let you put a house back without a foundation underneath it. So that would be what we would call a code upgrade and there's usually a policy provision that pays additional money on top of that limit of that 100,000 or 200,000 for code upgrades. But they have, a, they have they call it a different thing. Usually a building endorsement or the common knowledge is code upgrades. What's the county gonna require, the city's gonna require. So then you've got that, and there's also a part in there for the debris removal. And the debris removal is what would happen first. You would have to basically just get rid of all the debris and so people that specialize in insurance restoration understand this. And so you may, if you don't hire someone that doesn't understand, if you hire someone that doesn't understand the insurance industry, they may not be able to help you navigate this. And so it's beneficial if you can, at least you as the owner become familiar with your policy and it's up to you. And you can get this information through your adjuster. Your adjuster is really helpful, at least in this part of the country, it's very claim friendly, which means you can just call your adjuster. And you might even see them at Safeway or at one of the stores. And you just, and they'll say, and you don't want to be in that dynamic of, uh, I want to avoid my adjuster, my adjuster wants to avoid me. So to make a successful project in the, using the code for the building portion of it, the best thing is, is that you as the owner are the boss. The adjuster works for you and, the, and whatever contractors or whatever services that you hire works for you. Now, this is the most important thing out of that. Never pay up front for anything unless your, your contractor is well established and unless you're, you're, you're very sure with references that this guy is not going to take your money and leave because once you lost that money, you won't be able to get it back from the insurance company most of the time. And also realize that there's such a thing as a mortgage holder. And if you have a mortgage on your property, your insurance company is going to write that check for that one hundred thousand or that two hundred thousand. It's going to be made payable to you as the owner, and it's going to have the mortgage holder on it. And if you have any questions about mortgage holders or coverage A and how that works, always talk to your insurance adjuster. Anything on your coverage A, if you have a current mortgage on your property, your insurance company is going to put the mortgage holder and your name on the check. And each mortgage holder is very complex in itself. So there's people that specialize. Here at American Restoration, we have a full-time staff member that actually processes the working through the insurance 
companies perceive or uh, money that they pay for the reconstruction cost with a mortgage holder on it because the mortgage holder is named insured on your policy. So, for instance, the U.S. Bank or Wells Fargo or Chase or Umqua Bank, all these people are going to be having their name are going to be on your check that you receive from the insurance company for your coverage A. So just realize that. And also, um, there's also going to be a depreciated amount and there's also going to be an actual cash value. All those things I'll talk about on the later tape. You can always give, give us a call at American Restoration at 503-910-9102 and we can help you with regards to finding out about your mortgage company. And most of them are very helpful. It's usually, I've dealt, we literally have records on 50 or 60 different mortgage companies. So American Restoration, we're just glad to help you in any way we can. Um, feel free to call us and never pay your contractor. Never pay anyone until you're sure that they're, they've either done the work or that they're very well established. So thanks for listening, and we'll go on to coverage B and C and the rest of the story.